Hello everybody, welcome back to part 4 of my real-time caustics in Unreal Engine 4 series. Yesterday we talked a little bit about how to build our project settings and set up our post-process volume so that we can get started with our materials, our lights, and our scene today. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, first here we're going to come and as you can see we're in our scene and I'm going to click on our light source and in the details panel I'm going to search mesh and we're going to click on cast mesh caustics and then from there update the precision to 512 or whatever you set in your post process volume then we're going to close that and then I'm going to just delete this reflection capture I don't think we really need it based on the um, scene we're using is all dynamic then we're going to drag in this point lamp drag it up and then we're going to do the same thing type in mesh check mesh caustics and set that resolution to the same as the volume so from here I'm just going to change this intensity to 10 and then you're going to notice up here in the top it says lighting needs to be rebuilt this means that not every light in here is dynamic so change stationary to movable here in the settings do that for all the lights check everything make sure the other objects in your scene are also movable just to ensure that everything will cast light dynamically so from here, I think we can right click and make a new folder, and we're just gonna call that materials. You can also hit Control shift n but um, that's just a little sweet trick. From here, we're just gonna open this and make a new material, and we're gonna call it M underscore ground. This is our base ground material, and it's gonna be super simple. So I'm just gonna bring this up here, and right click and promote all of these to parameters all the way until roughness. So we're just gonna set this to a nice gray color, and yeah, that looks good. Okay, metallic, promote it to a parameter. Um, specular, we're gonna set that to 0.5 over on the left side. Okay, and then we are, okay, let me just line those up, sorry. Oh, never mind, it's not worth it. Okay, promote the roughness, and we're just gonna set that to 0.2. So, moving on from here, we can see that looks pretty nice. Um, you can do the normal and the ambient occlusion, but for now, we're just gonna leave it at that. Save it and close it. Next, we're going to right click and make it an instance. From here, I'm going to get rid of instance and just add an I after the end. This is just standard procedure that Unreal Engine documents recommend, and that's looking pretty nice. So from here, um, we're just going to click on basic, drag in a cone, and we're just going to use this as our object to cast shadows and caustics in our scene. So. Um, from here, we're just going to rotate it, and you can see where that shadow is, is where we want our caustics to show up. So, let's move into making a glass material. So let's make a new material, and we're going to call it M underscore translucent master. Now this is just a master material for all the glass effects, which allows us to later customize it individually per glass and gem material we want. So we're just going to open this side panel a bit more make it so we can see our material, and we're going to change this blend mode to translucent. Then we're going to check all of these refractive and reflective caustics check marks, and then as well as the custom data and two-sided. Then we're going to scroll down and change your lighting mode to forward shading and enable absorption. Absorption makes a huge difference in how good the glass looks. Um, I'm just going to check down here. Um, yeah, no, it looks good. So then we're going to scroll back up, um, we're going to find the dispersion setting, uh, where is it, there it is, okay, yeah, make sure, right there, yeah, that this is set to 1, if it's not, you won't get any dispersion in your scene, and it's not going to look so good. So now that that's done, let's just come in here to the side and promote all of these to a parameter, let's set this just to a nice white, and then from here, we are going to promote these to a parameter, uh, specular, we're going to set to 1 this time because one, we want lots of reflections to show up. Then for the roughness, let's promote to a parameter and set it to zero, so leave it as is, and then move the opacity. Then from here, we're going to set the opacity to around three. You can do values in between two and five, and they look pretty dang good. Um, promote refraction as well, and this is where we will control our index of refraction. You can call it index of refraction, or IOR, type whatever you want. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it at refraction, so I'm just going to delete that. Okay, yep, and we're just going to set this to a default value of 1.5. So from here, alrighty, that's, 
you can also set it to 2.42, that's diamond, but 1.5 I think is a good base to adjust later in the settings. So once this is saved, we're going to click on these parameter defaults. And in these parameter defaults, you'll see what will show up in each instance of the material. So over here, yep, right there, and you'll see those are the sliders. So if we right click it and create a new material instance, and then name that just to uh, mi underscore glass. Yep, okay, yes, that is it. Open it up. And then I'm going to control C and control V it actually really quickly and just call this one mi underscore gem. Now this is for a glass to start with. We're just going to come in here and you can adjust the opacity if you want. I'm just going to leave it. Um, change our refraction. We're going to make it more accurate to glass, which is 1.45. Okay, save that, close it. Then we're going to come into the gem material, double click it. And let's just enable it and change it to the refraction of the diamond, which is 2.42. Save that, and then we're just going to close that. And we're just going to take the glass material and we're going to apply it to this. We're going to apply it to this cone. So make sure the cone is movable. Um, you don't want it at static, so double check that it's movable as well. And then we're going to drag that glass material onto that cone. And boom, you are already seeing your caustics. This is so exciting. I love it. So from here, uh, we're just going to rotate it, kind of get an idea. And from there, we're going to move into part five, where we will be learning how to take this into the sequencer and optimize our movie render queue console variables to produce the best result possible. So go watch part five with me in the next video. Thanks.